So right now we're going to look at how to set up your AEM logging dash, either a CD5L or a CD7L. We'll look into how to record data into its internal memory and how to download that data and open it up, specifically being able to open it up in AEM data. First thing we're going to do is open up our current layout that we have on the dash. This one is our default black infinity VDM US units default layout. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to setup and then logging. What you'll see here is a list of channels that will be able to be logged. These are all just the default channels that are set up in the software. If you want to add your own, we're actually going to do that in another video. So right now you can see that these are set up in alphabetical order. And on the right you can see all the log rate. They're all blank right now just because we're not logging anything right now. So there's a couple ways that we can get started here. You could go one by one and pick whatever channels you want and then get the sampling rate. So for example, if we wanted to grab the top one here, AFR1 gas, we could go to the log rate next to it and choose a suitable log rate. Now these are in hertz values, which basically means how often the sample updates. So 1 hertz means that it will update 1 time a second, or 100 hertz would mean that it would update 100 times a second. The CD5 and the CD7 dashes can log up to 1 kilohertz, or 1000 a second. Now what you want here could vary between whatever channel you're using this for. So for example, a channel that takes your coolant temperature doesn't update all that often, so that one could be lower than other channels. Maybe something like 2 hertz to 10 hertz could work for it, but something that you're going to be looking at more often or something that changes faster, like RPM, you're definitely going to want a higher hertz rate for that. So for what we have here with air fuel ratio, 50 hertz will definitely be more than enough, but you also may want to log some different channels, so let's take a look at battery volts. That one I think could work with about 10 hertz. That should be fine. The faster you log, the more memory it will take, so if you don't need to log incredibly fast, then it's better not to. The more memory you have means the longer you can log and the more files you can log. So if we take a look at something like coolant temp, that will probably work better with just like 2 hertz. Something like engine speed we're definitely going to need more of, so we can go ahead and put that on 50 hertz. You can see that as we choose these channels to log, it will give us a total runtime down at the bottom there. So even though we chose 4 or 5 channels to be logging here, it's still telling us that we have 7 days worth of memory to log. So if we add more channels like GPS altitude here, you can see that the runtime will go down just slightly. So simply put, the more channels you add, the less runtime you'll have in the end. Another way to select the channels that you want to log is to use the log setup system here. So to do that, you'll go to the load button here and click on that, and that will allow you to use a predetermined list for logging. So you can see that here's a list that we've made called base logging. If you click on base logging, you'll see that it'll give you a pretty good setup here. It'll give you a lot more channels than what we did before. Now, of course, you can always go in here and change anything that you want. Like, let's say we'll go to engine speed here and we'll change that from 20 hertz to 50 hertz. And I think everything looks pretty good on this base list. So if you're okay with all that, then we're done with selecting channels. So our next step would be to look at under what condition the dash logs. Now the simplest way to do this is just have the dash log whenever the engine is running. So that would just be a simple on off trigger with a single trigger condition. And in most of our default layout, we have a channel called engine running which is basically an on and off condition that will basically just tell you if the engine is running. So if we select that, then anytime the engine is running, then it will automatically data log. If you want to choose a different kind of input, you can always do that as well. You can always have two separate triggers, one that will turn on the logging and one that will turn off the logging, or you could just log all the time with this button. Let's go ahead and stick with our engine running trigger, and then if we're all happy with that, then we'll go ahead and click OK. Now we're going to go ahead and save this file. So we'll go ahead and go to File, and then Save As. Then you can name it whatever, we'll go ahead and name ours Demo Logging Test. And so now let's go ahead and upload data to the dash. You can do that by hitting Control U, or going to File and then Upload to Display. So now you wait for that green bar down there to say OK to disconnect, and then everything's worked great. So now that it tells us that it's OK to disconnect, we'll go ahead and unplug it. Then we'll confirm that our dash is displaying live data, and so everything's looking good. And so now to record our log file, we'll turn on the engine and then just let it idle for about 10 or 15 seconds. Now in order to download the data from the dash, we're going to actually need to go to AEM data. And with AEM data open, we can simply plug in the dash via USB. And then you'll see down there that it'll say logger detected. And then you can go ahead and click download data. So this will give us a list of all the log files that we've taken. So far we've only taken that one. So of course we'll use that one. So we'll go ahead and check mark it and then click OK. It'll then ask you where you want to save it. We'll save ours in the same demo logs folder. Call it whatever you'd like and then just save it. 
this is just asking you whether or not you want to open this in your current project. We'll go ahead and say yes and open this up here. And there you go. Now the log from the dash is opened up within AEM data. If you have any other questions about AEM data, make sure to let us know in the comments so we can help you guys out. And make sure you subscribe so you can learn more about AEM data.